My name is uh, Rob Vandenberg. I'm the Director of Evaluation of the Global Environment Facility. And I would like to start off this side event by giving you a, a short introduction into what the Evaluation Cooperation Group is actually doing, how it is composed, and the headlines that are emerging out of this uh, uh, briefing note. Uh, and um, let me then introduce uh, Ken Chomich on my left. He is from the Independent Evaluation Group of the World Bank. And um, he uh, has actually, uh, he's going to present to you more substantively what is behind these headlines and what the specific findings were on the subjects that we will raise with you. And then we have uh, Kapil Kutrao from the Asian Development Bank, who has also done uh, part of the work that, led, uh, that fed into this uh, briefing note and uh, give you uh, especially then uh, an Asian perspective on uh, how this translates into the specific circumstances of Asia. We could not do this for every continent. We just basically want to give you a glimpse of how it operates in one of the continents but uh, you'll, for the rest of it, it's more of a global picture, how it emerges from the evaluations of the Global Environment Facility, of the World Bank Group, and of the, um, uh, and of the, uh, the Asian Development Bank. And then we have uh, Tom Heller at the, um, at the end, uh, uh, who will give the last uh, um, presentation and comments. So let me go to the first slide. The Evaluation Cooperation Group of the banks is an, uh, a gathering of all the independent evaluation departments of the international financial institutions. We have to think here of the regional banks, the World Bank Group, uh, IMF, and, 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 the, um, and several other funds, like the Islamic Development Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and the International Funds for Agricultural Development but also the European Investment Bank is in there. All of these have independent evaluation departments. This means that these evaluation departments don't um, report to management of these institutions, but they report to the boards, the governing bodies. So they provide an independent source of information on what is happening on the ground. And the same is true for the Global Environment Facility. As a director of evaluation, I was appointed by the GF Council, not by the GF CEO. So, uh, and we report directly to the Council. So again, we have an independent source of information about what is happening on the ground, and what the reality is behind the beautiful data that you, and briefing notes that you get from the institutions themselves. So the group of the Evaluation Cooperation Group of the banks uh, developed as a, as a, a call for uh, identifying best practices and lessons learned in, uh, the, in uh, the multilateral banks and in the international financial institutions. Best practices is something that is relatively internally oriented. The banks of course want to know whether they are being evaluated according to the best international standards. And these standards are identified by this group and by other groups as well, for the bilaterals, for example, or for the UN. But this group in itself can be then very powerful also externally. It can gather evaluative evidence from more than one in, uh, institution. It can actually go through the evaluative evidence from several institutions and then identify lessons learned that are uh, shown to be the case throughout these institutions. Uh, we as an office participate in uh, this group uh, because we are part of the World Bank structure. We are not reporting to the World Bank, but the Global Environment Facility, as you may know, is hosted administratively by the World Bank group. So we are part of this culture and we interact strongly with the Evaluation Cooperation Group of the Bank. Could we go to the next slide? So our energy efficiency note, and 
is a briefing note of the ECG plus the GEF. And this note is based on uh, four groups of evaluations. It's not just one evaluation. But the Asian Development Bank, for example, did several evaluations and gathered that into a knowledge brief document. Uh, the World Bank Group has also done several evaluations. EBRD has done one big evaluation, but also has project evaluations that were merged into this. And of course the GF Evaluation Office has evaluated the substantial portfolio of the GF on energy efficiency, which, which all in all, uh, together with co-funding, is more than $10 billion. So evaluations, these evaluations were discussed in a workshop that we had in, in Manila, and we had then follow through discussions later on in Washington and a small working group of the Asian Development Bank, ABRD, GEF and the World Bank Group prepared this briefing note. Uh, and we had a last discussion about this in November in Washington. Could we have the next slide please? The headlines of this note, the, the big message that is coming out of it is that energy efficiency investments are highly cost effective that uh, fossil fuel subsidies actually discourage energy efficiency. So on the one hand we have this cost-effective message, on the other hand we see that the opportunities of, of energy efficiency are not always taken on board, are not always... Uh, why not? Because of current subsidies, for example. And because of the fact that the financial sector isn't always convinced that energy efficiency loans are a good thing. Um, but we also see in the evidence that they can be persuaded to provide these loans. And we see genuine demonstration projects emerging on the ground, which can transform markets towards energy efficiency that has uh, remarkable achievements in greenhouse gas emission reductions. Thus, we find that the biases against energy efficiency projects can be overcome. They tend to be thought of as too complicated to operate. So, there are also lost opportunities there. But we also see that the monitoring of impacts needs to be improved. And as to the why and how of all of this, I'm very glad to give the floor to Ken Chomich to go through you with these headlines more in detail. So, thank you very, very much for your attention, and I give the floor to Ken.